All right, we're back again. Uh, Al and Mike are with me again this week. And uh, this is uh, Politics and Prepper podcast Saturday night here at TalkShoe.com. We come on 10 o'clock Central Time. So y'all do the math and figure it out to wherever you're at. Welcome to stop by. But as always, I want to remind you, this is the no liberal zone. We don't need you. Don't even call in if you can give us liberal stuff because we don't even need to hear it. We already know where that goes. Anyway, you know, calling names and lies and bullshit that goes on with all that. But if I could find a liberal that would sit down and talk on the show without being mean and not calling names and just discuss the topics, I'd do it. But I haven't been able to find one. Anyway, I'm sure there's one out there. Tonight, uh... I guess the big news is the debate. Uh, none of us watched it because there was nothing to be said that was going to change our minds. But I did listen to you know all, this, all the talk shows and different comments, and it was nice to see Romney did well, even though as if you've listened to the podcast before, you know I don't think Romney's going to be much better. Maybe they'll slow things down and give us a chance to catch up a little bit, but. You know, who knows where that's going to go. He's so wishy-washy on where he goes with some things sometimes. It's, when he gets there, if he wins, I don't know where he's going to go. We'll just have to wait and see. But despite the fact that the left-wing liberal media wants us to think, or was trying to, like, hell, will make us think that Obama's a shoe-in and, you know, y'all don't, don't even need to show up to, to vote. You know, trying to discourage people to even vote because there's no way that Romney was going to win. Obama's got it made. You did notice, I don't know if y'all, y'all noticed, but I'm sure some of y'all noticed that just before the debate, Obama and his groups were all out there, you know, trying to downplay it a little bit. And I don't know why. I don't know if they just knew he was not going to do worth the shit against Romney because, you know, the truth doesn't work. I mean, the, the lies don't work when you, if you come back with the truth and the facts. And, of course, you know, uh, Obama tried to, what, three times, I think, get that, that, that Romney was going to uh, cut taxes by $5 trillion and he was going to do this and that and, you know, how bad that was going to be. And finally, Romney got in there and, you know, he was saying, you know, and I, I'm paraphrasing. I don't remember exactly what he said because I didn't listen to it. I just heard it later that, uh, you know, that he's got four boys or four kids and uh, he's used to being lied to and or not telling you the truth and they keep trying to tell you the same thing over and go over again, trying to thinking you'll believe it if you hear it enough, which is one of the tactics of the, the liberals. So basically it's like, the way I read it, and I, I'm not the only one, he was sitting there just calling nicely, though, calling Obama a child. I thought that was great. You know, yeah. I don't even know, I don't even know if, I, if Obama figured it out. It probably went over his head because he's nowhere near as smart as everybody says he is. It's it's probably uh, it's so polarizing. Everything. Yeah. I don't know how many swing votes there are left, but. I don't know. I can't imagine he was undecided. Yeah, I don't think there's a whole bunch of undecided. And even when they do these polls, you know, they when you they sit there and tell you if you look at the fine print, you know, they some of them they oversampled by what seven percent. Some of them they oversampled to the Democrat side by fourteen percent. And if you only win it, win them by two, three, four, five percent, when you oversample by seven to fourteen, well, you're not winning, you're losing. So, you know, but they don't tell you how they oversampled the side that they want to make look good. They just come out with these stupid statistics that don't make sense. And that, I mean, why even bother unless you just, that's what you want to do in the first place and lie about it. Yeah, I heard a, a radio, um, or no, the TV ad today is, is, one, is for Obama. And he said, they said something to the effect that, um, you know, Mitt Romney is going to raise or going to cut taxes on the, the most the richest people, and and the experts say this is a little closet turn there. The experts say that 
in order to do this, he's going to have to raise the taxes on the middle class. And, and you know, but it's their experts that say it. You know, yeah, um, how they much just say the experts say. Survive. Yeah, I mean, just, first of all, he doesn't say he's going to do that. It's, their experts say that's how he's going to have to go to do it. Well, of course, they, they got to twist it around. <laughs> oh. I mean, no one, I think, no one talks about cutting the spending, though. I can call a whole bunch of people and say they're experts and sit, have them come into the show and t- have them tell me what I want to hear. And well, I, the, sad, the sad thing is neither one of them want to cut spending or balance the budget. So we're pretty much doomed. <laughs> we're going to go broke. But, yeah, and Obama's already raised the taxes on the middle class, and people just don't realize it. Yeah. I mean, it's costing me like twenty three hundred to three thousand dollars a year more because of this stupid crap that he's done. Right. Right. Yeah, right. And taxes on on certain products that are uh, medical related are gone up, and that's not even counting you know how much the fuel is right now. And you don't hear a damn thing about it on TV on the left wing media about the gas prices. When man, they barked, barked, and barked before on, on the last election, how bad the gas prices were and how terrible was it was for people. Well, they, they print money and you know, drive inflation up to devalue our dollar. I mean, well, you know, that too. I mean, all taxes. I don't know how how you can sit back and even figure out what it's all, all the damage that he's done with all the bullshit. Al, you still there? You're awful quiet. I think maybe we lost Al. Maybe he dropped out. No, I'm here. Okay. I know you were having a little bit of trouble last week. Yeah, I was last week, but I'm, I've been just listening. <laughs> Don't have anything to contribute on the debates other than uh, uh, I noticed that uh, what's the governor from uh, New Mexico that Gary? Uh, I, 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 he's running on the Libertarian Party. Yeah, uh, he uh, of course he was locked out, and uh, a lot of people don't realize it, but the. Uh, the uh, corporation, that debate corporation that they have set up is actually owned jointly by the Republican and the Democratic Party for the purpose of locking anybody out they want. Right. And uh, he has actually filed a lawsuit, and there's a possibility he may be at the next uh, debate. So oh, that would be awesome. That yeah. would be, but it's not going to happen. Probably not. Probably not. They... Uh, he does uh, do quite well uh, whenever he does get to speak. Uh, he does. Speak. The problem is most people don't even know that he exists. And, you know, most the. Well, and there, therein lies the problem. Depending on how you want you look at it, you know. Right. You can say think like you know we've discussed before, whether it be Obama or Romney, it doesn't matter. We're still screwed. Right. And right. If, no, if, no, he gets, I, if he gets in, just a minute, Mike. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll give it. If, yeah. he, if he gets into the debate. And he gets any popularity, he's going to take away from Romney, not Obama. So Obama's a shoe in, you know. So it just no. really depends on how you think about the whole situation. But go ahead, Mike. No, I guess I was just thinking that I think the more we get, like, a, I'm a big Ron Paul supporter, but the more we get this kind of messages out and get people think, oh. well, I yeah. and bring up these different thoughts about how to view, you know, our, our dead and the Fed and. Well, I think, you know, if, if it's a good thing, I would like to see Romney get in over Obama, but I still don't know how much good it's going to do. But what I would like to see afterwards, if people get on him and just keep him pinned down on all this crap and let the, the libertarians and, and people like us just grind him down until he can't do anything but do what's right. Just mm-hmm. keep on him and push and push and push. Who's that? Romney, because no. it's not going to work with Obama. Well, it, it won't work with uh, Romney either. So, I mean, Obama would do whatever he wants to do mm-hmm. because he doesn't have to worry about re-election again. But so probably make more Romney sense might get some yeah. congressmen there. Yeah, well, that too. I mean, we have to get some congressmen in there to push. But, I mean, if enough organizations and enough libertarians, constitutionalists, uh, real Republicans would keep fighting – as hard as they do during the elections, and hard as they did during the last, you know, uh, the two years ago elections, when all the with so many Senate seats and stuff changed over, if they would keep yeah, but, pushing like that after the election, hey, that didn't do any good. Well, not yet. 
I was, I was hoping it Senate, will someday, but you know. the Senate, the Senate seat change over didn't do any good. <laughs> Uh, I mean, you, you've got a you got a point there. But. I mean, I mean, you think about it, we're we're on the same track we've been on for you know the last twenty years. Yeah, and, and nothing's gonna no no matter who gets in there, it's gonna be on the same track. Uh, there, I mean, when Obama can go before the the Congress and tell them that we take orders from the UN, and yeah, y'all don't make any difference anymore. And none of them, and not one of those people. I mean, they didn't do anything. I mean, they, that yeah. was impeachable. They should have stood up and said, fuck, F they, you. They, they, should have, <laughs> yeah. they, they should have impeached him. But did that happen? No. Uh, you got one, there was one congressman running around wanting to impeach him, and, and you know, he's the one that they have nothing on, you know, <laughs> is what it boils down to. Uh, they got all the rest of them by the short hairs. But th- didn't you guys think that, um, that both parties wanted – Keep us distracted with stupid topics every single freaking election. Oh yeah, so, and, you know that's about. I mean, not that not that it's not important about uh, abortion, but that's not. It's not like a main. Not, no one talks about that, and anyone during election year. You know what I mean? Right. Well, that's what yeah. this whole debate thing is: is keep everybody, you know, distracted. From- yeah, make them think that you know there's it makes a difference. Right. But that's, that's why I want to keep Gary Johnson. Uh, Gary Johnson is that his name? Yeah, that's it, Gary Johnson. Yeah. That's why they want to keep him out because he, those kind of guys bring in the right. topics when people are thinking about. Right. You know. Well, let's get you know, let's get guys like that. Keep fighting with groups that are that really do care. I mean, they didn't they, even after the election and fight like hell for four years and push somebody up there and use them for the the after the you know for the 2016 elections and push them up there to the top. I mean, do you, you really think that there would be a chance of – I mean, look what happened to Ron Paul in, you know, like Iowa. He won the Iowa – he won those – he actually won the state. Uh, did he get it? No. Um, you know, there was two or three states that he actually won. I think – well, Louisiana, they actually called the cops on uh, – With the delegates, you mean? Oh, the, yeah. In Louisiana, they called the cops on the delegates and broke, broke the guy's fingers, you know. Um, so it's going to, you know, we're, we're to the point where no matter what happens, it's going to be one of the two that the elitists have selected. And, uh, you know, it's just, they, they present us with two and give us a, you know, this fake ideal that we're, we're electing somebody. And, and in fact, we're, they're both puppets and they're going to do what they're going to do. And they're following the plan, and well, enough. If enough people will stand up, we can fix it. But I don't know how do you get enough people to stand up unless it gets so freaking bad that just nobody can stand it anymore. Not enough people that know there's a problem. Yeah, well, that's part of it. Yeah, I've been listening to this Tenth Amendment movement. You know that there's a Tenth Amendment, Tenth, tenth Amendment. Um, they've got podcasts, and it's it's interesting to listen to them. But I, you know, I was thinking about it. They're, you know, talking about all these, uh, you know, nullifying um, the federal government. And because it's in the Constitution, you know, that we can nullify. But if you really stop and think about it, look at all the amendments that they're just totally ignoring, that the federal government's ignoring. So I think if we really started, you know, states really started trying to nullify, um, they, they would pretty much just ignore that amendment, you know, the Tenth Amendment. So you're saying almost like it's not secession, but... Yeah, it's, I, I think it almost would... It's, uh, it's, it's kind of bordering on that. Yeah, it's almost going to take that. Um, for instance, that Tenth Amendment group, they have uh, a bills already ready for nullification of the Obama um, health care yeah. bill, you know. But um, I'm kind of anxious to see if anybody's going to attempt to do it. I tend to submit, you know, they're they're after telling people to, you know, get after their representatives and uh, See, there's only a couple of states that are strong enough, like strong willed enough and like independent thinking enough, like Texas, maybe Alaska or something that Well Texas ain't it. We got so many damn liberals no, here and a and a coward in the <laughs> up in as a governor. Well if it ain't Texas, I don't know who the hell it is. I mean Well our problem here is we've had we've had so many 
people coming in here from California to screw everything up. But well, that's yeah, fine, that, yeah. that and so many other that's states that they've, that they've already destroyed, so they don't have jobs, so they come down here. And how many times they said they come down here? And go, well, back home we do this. Well, shut up because that's why you're here because you screwed it up up there. Yeah. Well, we had Minnesota move down. You know, remember the old story uh, where the last person in Minnesota turned a lot? That was back in the seventies when they were all moving in here. <laughs> Yeah, and they don't listen. I mean, they don't learn. Back in the 70s, I remember the, how bad it was, but they don't learn. They keep doing it. They come back, and, and the same people will sit there and vote for more of it, even when they know better. And they, I mean, and I don't, I don't mean the congressmen and the senators. I mean the everyday average people like us that are out there voting for whoever we want in there. They vote for the same kind of stupid shit. Yeah. And, and you can't tell them anything. They will not listen to facts. All they care about is sitting on their butts, getting paid too well for what they do without doing anything, or getting paid to sit at home and collect food stamps and whatever else. Yeah, I mean, I, I think we're beyond repairing things politically. I, re- I really do. It's, I, I think it's going to take... Well, I'm not going to give up, but I, I, not, I can't argue I, with you there. Yeah, I mean, I'm not, I'm not, and I'm not saying you know take your guns and go to Washington and all that. I mean, I think, I think we're at the point of the only thing that's going to straighten anything out is is getting a movement going in the states, which there are to su- basically succeed. Well, how many people are left in the United States? I mean, are here in the United States that haven't left because they've given up? <laughs> they were talking about that the other day. Do what now? How many millions of people do we have here in the States now? We were talking about the other night, but I don't remember the numbers. Two, well, probably about 230 million. Two, I don't know. You're talking about, you're talking about uh, legal. You're talking about total <laughs> oh. population? Yeah, what's the population in the United States? Well, it's supposed to be like, you know, it's over 300 million. Yeah, it's 300 million now, isn't it? All right. Yeah. 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 And I don't know what it is if you just count the legal ones. But anyway, yeah, people, I know. You're going to make think I'm being prejudiced, but I'm not. I don't care if you're here. If you come want to come here, come here legally. That's all I give a shit. Illegal, legal. They're all there. So. <laughs> now, anyway. Well, they have diplomatic immunity, even. Oh, though. I know. But anyway, let's let's. Uh, uh, where was I going here? Uh, so we leave our guns at home. But what would be bad about leaving our guns at home? And about ten million of us go up to Washington D.C. and say, "You're going to straighten up, or we're just going to haul your ass out of here." That wouldn't do any good. Why not? <laughs> They got the guns. They got a lot of bullet. They got a lot of hollow points. <laughs> they got a lot of yeah. That's exactly you think they're right. gonna? You think they're gonna shot, start shooting at ten million people? Ten million people? Yeah. No, you never get ten million people to go there. I know it, but hey, let me dream for a minute. I'm just talking shit here. <laughs> I, don't, I mean, you can't get everybody together. Why can't you get ten million people out of two hundred plus million? Because they don't care enough. Because it's not hurting bad enough. Well, no, that's that's true, and um, y- y- yeah, I mean, you can't get enough people to stick together. I mean, you, you I mean, when I was driving on the road, I mean, you, you take uh, all, you know, like give you an example, like in Atlanta, they, you know, they had the loop around the, you know, two eighty five around the city, and you had to drive around the loop, and you, you know, took, you know, long way out of your way going around the city when you could go straight through it, you know, and every trucker out there cries and complain about it. Well, if every trucker would just say, well, he ain't delivering there. You know? Mm-hmm. Uh, but you couldn't get them to do it. Um, California, you know, look at all the crazy laws we have on them guys that they'd all say, we ain't delivering there. But you can't get them to do it. So I, our problem is you can't get people to stick together. You can't get people to group together to, to, to do anything. Because they're not hurting bad enough. Well, and they don't see it on TV. If, if we didn't have food stamps and all the extras and pay, you know, giving people whatever they need to be able to sit on their butts, like it was during the Depression when people were in food lines, if we still had that, people would know how bad it is out right there. People don't see how bad it is. Well, I think the food stamp business, there's a purpose for that. I really do. I think they're going to get everybody on them food stamps, and then when they get ready, they're just going to cut them off cold. Oh, hell yeah. That'll, that'll screw things up. That's what they want to do. Then they'll come in and say, uh, martial law. They'll all go sit in your houses and behave yourselves, and we'll come collect the guns. Well, I'll tell you what. You better keep an eye on uh, Syria over there. 
Yeah. It's getting bad. Well, the, you know, finally, enough of this. People have kept talking about the the uh, uh, assassination of the, what was his name? The ambassador? Yeah, the ambassador. I can't, well, again, I can't remember his name because you know how bad I am with names. But anyway, at least they're not giving up on it. They're still pushing on this. You know, because they knew ahead of time, and I think most of us that pay attention to what's going on knew that that wasn't just a, a bunch of demonstrators going bad. No. And there was plenty of evidence from the damn first day what it really was. That poor guy was set up for that. And I heard that he was there trying to get guns back that we had given out. I don't know how much truth to that there is. All you got to do is look at Mexico. Oh, yeah. If they did it there, why would they do it there? Yeah. Well, and part of that... Hundred and you know, one point six billion rounds. I think something's going to happen this month. Well, I know they're wanting. To, I really do believe they would like uh, to pull some kind of stunt that gets Obama back in because I don't think he's got a chance of winning. I don't care what they say. I think there's a. Most people have already made up their mind. See, it's going to be like back when when Reagan was elected. They kept telling us how how bad Reagan was doing and how low he was in the polls, but when it come down to election day, he kicked the butt. Steve, mark my word. Write it down right now. He will be reelected. I'm going to have to disagree, but he could be. I mean, if if they don't pull something, I mean, but you could be right. Maybe I'm not, you know they'll I'm not, I'm fix the election or something. I'm just telling you, he'll be reelected. You just wait and see. Well, I hope you're wrong. <laughs> you're saying because it's the master plan. Let me, let me, and I'll tell you why I say that. Over the last few years, when I've had decisions, you know, to look at, I always look at what, which one would do, which one would do the worst harm to the country, and it's always that. I mean, you think back, you know, I mean, when Obama ran the last time, you know, I said, okay, which one would be the worst one for the country, and it was Obama. And he got he got elected, and I, you know, I would have never thought. I mean, did you think he was going to get elected? I had at this point of the game, yeah. It, no, back, it was close. Back, to, no, this back, close to the election then, I, yeah, I thought he would probably win. In two thousand eight, you did. Yeah, yeah. Well, anyway, all you got to do in my mind with this is just you just look at which one would be worse, would you know, be the worst thing for the country, and that and that's because they're doing it on purpose. They're destroying the country. That's why I say Obama will be the one who gets elected. He'll get reelected because it, it would be the worst. Well, I wouldn't doubt that you were wrong. I'm just hoping you're wrong. And I think you're wrong. But we'll see. You know, we don't have a whole lot more time to wait to find out. No. Four, about four more shows. And it, yeah. It may not make any difference like we talked about anyway. Either one is going to screw us up. Oh, I know. I know. But I just don't I think, want him there. I want him to lose. And I, 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 I think, think he's going to. And the reason I say I think they're they're deciding to push on ahead with what they're trying to do, and he's going to be the one, and you know they want in place to, because that way he can do, you know what he wants to do, and everybody, you know he's 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 definitely more polarizing, and that's what they want. Yeah. Well, if he gets reelected, it might happen, just for the fact that they've been talking about the. On um, several different times, I've heard re- recently that uh, people are surprised that that Obama's even lived through it this long, which was one of the things I've said all along. I hope nothing happens to him because that will be the start of the end, right there. Oh, I know. And if he goes up there for another four, that's going to set some crazy ass off to go do it, something stupid, or. The powers that be will have it to make it. They could use that to start things off. Right. They may just set somebody up to do it, but because I don't put anything past them. No. Nope. But yeah, I, I'm gonna stick with it. I'm gonna say he's gonna get reelected. Uh, you're more con- you're you're more convinced that you're right than I am. <laughs> I'm not convinced I'm right, but I, I think I'm right. <laughs> but and I, I dang sure wouldn't bet you on it. Because I could, the way I, when I bet on something, I can guarantee I'm going to, I could bet the sun would come up tomorrow and that dang thing wouldn't. It'd stay down.
Yeah. Now, I mean, Mike, Mike, did you get the the new ad up for the Ready Project? Uh, not yet. No, it's not up yet. All right. Well, I was trying to get uh, okay for it, but they keep keyhawing around and haven't okayed me for the link yet. So I'm just gonna go ahead and buy it. And I'll buy it through your link, and we'll test it out. Let everybody know how how it does. So, Al, what are you going to do it? Don't wait on me. Uh, what does that pay? What, what kind of commission does it pay? Oh, it's like, well, it depends on what. Uh, I've read through a bunch of them. Some of them are 5%. Some of the stuff is 12%. But I'm not really doing it for that. I was, you know, if I make a little bit of money to. Right. But, I, you know, and if if I get it and I don't like it, I'll I'll, I'll cancel it. You know, and then I'll tell everybody it's not worth the day. What, the, the product? Yeah, the product. Oh, I don't. I don't the service, you know, if they if they do anything I don't like, I'll I'll tell people the truth about it. Yeah. But on you know on on my best bug at content dot com site, I've got like uh, uh, oh that's one yeah I was gonna t- re- tell y'all something. Anyway, I put I put a food insurance on there, a banner for food insurance, and anyway, I've had this happen a couple times where. I I'd mentioned, you know, the food insurance or somebody else has mentioned it because they went to the site and said, well, what is that food insurance? Uh, if everything goes down the tubes, you know, we're not going to, they're not going to be able to send you any food. There's not going to be any trucking. I said, oh, no, it's not <laughs> food insurance. Like you send your money in and then if something goes bad, they send you food. You send your money in and they send you the product and they just call it food insurance. You know, you have the product there with you, so if things go bad, you have your backup food. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'll tell you what, I, you know, I've been looking around. I don't know if you've seen the the stove in a can product. Have you seen that? The stove in a can, yes, I have. Yeah, what I'm looking around for, I'm looking at a way to make that, those fuel cells, there's got to be a cheaper way than what they're selling for that stuff. I mean, it's kind of, it's like $3 per hour is what it boils down to. Yeah, and, and I don't really, I've never looked to see, to, I've thought, not thought about the way you're, you're, you're thinking about it, to see if there was a cheaper way to do it. Maybe I'll look into it. Maybe we can come up with something. I mean, I pretty much settled on having, you know, that, that volcano stove, which is uh, propane, charcoal or wood and then having a rocket stove but i was kind of thinking about something you know like the something like that stove in a can you know it'd be quick and easy um if if the if you get the fuel cells down cheap enough you know um man i just can't see three dollars an hour that's what it works out to they, they, each one of those costs three bucks and they work it they last an hour that's that's ridiculous yeah and that's more for the the first part of an emergency you know that's not for a long term yeah i know so, i understand that but i'm i'm thinking long term and uh, it, you, you might not hurt to have you know some in case you have to get out or something, you can't take all your stuff with you. But yeah, they, it sells for like twenty nine ninety five with four of those cells. But and you can get it. At, I saw it at Bass Pro Shop for like eight dollars and something with with one cell. And uh, that for you know for like the initial temporary use, that might be might not be a bad deal. Bad deal to have one or two of those. And it would be a good idea to have some. Uh, you know, so I've got. There's people out there stocking up on wood and charcoal, stuff like that. But you may not want that to a certain extent, especially early on, because that's going to – just the smell and, and the smoke will might get people to uh, give you more attention than you want. But the fuel in the can for the first part of it, you know, you can just come inside and be quiet and yeah. warm something up. That might be good for that. Uh uh, you can have your little camping stove with the propane bottle, something like that. Uh, the little propane bottles, uh, they last a long time. You can cook up a lot of food on them with them. Well, that's it, what I'm trying you know. to find out. How long does one of those bottles last? Well, it depends on the stove. I mean, you usually got these little uh, two-burner stoves that you get, you know, that fold up, like the Coleman stoves. Right. 
Now, if you put one of those bottles on there, you can get a lot of cooking done, but I've never sat there and, and figured out by the hour. But they, you can get a lot of cooking done with them. So it, it, it's, it's worth it. You can also take, uh, you know, the bigger propane bottles that you use on, like, your barbecue pit. Right. You can adapt that down to work on a, on a little Coleman stove. Or, and you can also make an adapter to go from a bigger bottle to refill the smaller bottles if you want. Now, they'd say don't do that. But if you're careful and it's an emergency, I could see where, you know, it, it might be worth something to have around. Well, see, that's where that volcano stove would come in handy. It's, uh, you know, it does, it does butane or, or, or propane, I guess you call it. Yeah. Propane. Propane or briquettes, and you know, so I kind of—that's one of the reasons I was thinking about that one. Well, I think it would—I I, I liked what you you talked about last week, and I went back and looked at some of that stuff. I like it. I think it's 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 a worthy thing to have. I, the one I didn't find was where you could do it with the bricks, but I was getting tired and I didn't follow through on that. But I, I need to find that and, and go back and look at that. But uh, all this stuff is good to good knowledge, and you just fit it in where you think it's best. But for longer term survival, if you're going to be sitting in one spot for a while, that's a good thing. Which uh, stove were you looking at? I the both of them. I looked at both of them. So the volcano, yeah, yeah. And the rocket. And the, and the volcano, rocket. Yeah. See I, see, I was thinking about the volcano because you're going to initially start off using propane for the same re- you know, for the reason you were talking about it. You know, kind of stay, you know, kind of stay under the radar mm-hmm. and uh, use that. And and also, you know, just re- rehydrating uh, food that you have. You know, you're just boiling water and you, you know, boil some water and you rehydrate your uh, whatever you know, some right. meals, and uh, and that would probably keep the smell down and no smoke, whatever. So that would probably work. But yeah. then, as you ran out of propane, you could move over to burning wood in it. Yeah, and there would probably be a lot of uh, plenty of wood around. You may not want to go out for a while to go scavenge it up, though. So that was well. Yeah. No, you, well, what what I was this one guy was saying, uh, and one, he was in a. Uh, I can't remember which hurricane it was, but they he was burning pickets off his fence. For, oh yeah, there's all kinds of stuff you can come up. So, with, you, know, you know, in a in a in a in a you know in the SHTF or whatever you know crap hits the fan scenario, yeah. you might as well burn your <laughs> burn your fence pickets. You know, and then <laughs> there's all kinds of stuff you'll find that'll work. I yeah. mean, you know, once you get to that point, and if you can move around. That's not going to be one of your bigger problems. Your bigger problem will be staying safe, just being outside, because you never know when somebody might not be looking at you the right way <laughs> or watching you. No, no. I mean, you're going to be. Yeah. It's going to be. Uh, if something came down like that, I mean, you, especially in a city, you, you're not even going to want to go outside. I mean, you're going to have to worry about snipers. You're going to have to worry about yeah. everything. And I don't even know how to tell anybody how long that would last. I mean, because I don't think anybody knows. No. You know, I mean, it could be weeks before it started to calm down, depending on the situation. It could be months. could be years. But you can't stay inside forever. So you got to look at your other situations, you know. Uh, what can you do in any particular situation, but nobody knows what situation you're actually going to be in. Right. You just got to learn as much stuff as you can as quickly as you can, and and hopefully you have enough common sense to make them all work out as best you can in a in whatever situation it is. And that's why it's so hard to talk about some of this stuff sometimes because you get these pointed questions that you really, if you're given a specific scenario, yeah, you can come up with the answer, but nobody really knows what that specific scenario is actually going to be, and in the town, it's going to be one answer. In the suburb, it's going to be another answer. And out in the country, it's going to be another answer. Now, some of them will be the same, but overall, your overall strategy is going to be different. Uh, there were one of the places that I've told you all that we've got where we can go. It would be very hard for anybody to get anywhere close to us in a vehicle. Yeah. Because if they're in a vehicle, there's only one way in. And we can see them an hour before they get there. 
But if they walk in, they're going to be really probably very desperate people because it is a long walk out there, and it is a hazardous walk out there, and it is a dry walk out there. Mm-hmm. So luckily there's water on that property, and I've never seen it dry. Well, one of the things I you know, I was I came across the other day that that there's a couple of things people need to do. Um, one is to to use a mount, you know, whatever, and uh, plot the fastest way home from their job. And I don't mean in car, but uh, on foot. Um, and have an alternative too, in case. And have alternatives. Yeah. The other thing everybody needs to do is target in their neighborhood places where there's potential water, you know, swimming pools, fountains, mm-hmm. uh, creeks. Swimming beds. pools, depending on your, your location, is a great place to scavenge that water very quickly because you can dump a five-gallon bucket in there quick and just get the hell out of there. And it's got enough chlorine in it that it's going to last a while. You might have to air it out and get some yeah. of that chlorine out. But they also have, uh, for like aquariums, there's these little drops you can put in to get rid of the chlorine. Right. You can have a small bottle of that, and that stuff will go a long ways when you're talking about drinking water. Right. Well, and also um, using the um, those candle filters that you can get for cheaper than dirt has them for like 17 bucks, And, you know, you can make a filter system with two five-gallon buckets. And yeah. uh, they, they even show you on their site how to do it. And but, most people will have that stuff in the area where they can do it. Yeah, you definitely want to have that set up. But the plotting out where the water is in your area, um, and those are two key things everybody needs to do because water is going to be key. Water is definitely key. Water is number one. Yeah. You may be suffering also for a few days with no food, but you're dying in a few days with no water. Yeah, also uh, be able to uh, quickly attach something to your drain your, to uh, collect water like you were talking about? Downspout off yeah. your house to uh, collect water. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Matter of fact, I was looking at my house, and we have, um, you know, I've got rain gutters in the front, but on the back of my house, uh, which is a huge, um, you know, roof, and there's not a thing, there's no, no rain gutter in the back. And uh, I was, like, looking at that, you know, last week we were talking about calculating how much water, you know, in a square foot, mm-hmm. and I mean this thing is huge. The, the yeah, you weren't even calculating it for the whole house. No, and uh, I'm like looking at that. And said, man, look at all the water that would be wasted coming off of that. So anyway, that's one of my projects coming up is to to get uh, put a gutter system in in the back yeah. of my house because it's just it's just a it's a huge area. And there's a lot of filter systems out there that you can go buy cheaply. I don't mean you have to hook them up to your faucet in your house. I mean ones for camping. They've got all types of them out there that'll do a good job. That if that's what you need, you can do it. If you don't want to have to build something right away, you just want to have something there in case things go bad. You have that possibility sitting right there. You just go out and collect your water, and you can filter it. But it would be good to know how to build the other filters for longer term. Yeah, the, I tell you, the cheapest one, I've, I mean, the, probably the best I've seen yet is using those, uh, those uh, uh, what do they call them? They're, uh, it's, uh, they call them candlestick filters that's made out of, uh, is it porcelain? No, wait a minute, what is it that stuff's made out of? You know, I haven't looked at, I've seen them, but I haven't looked into them. But anyway, they're like 17 bucks, and um, they'll do 2,600 gallons of water, which is a lot of water. Yeah, and you just, and and I think you back flush them and to clean yeah. them. I believe but so. They're 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 a, they're but I mean using that and the two five gallon buckets, you know, you get for you know three bucks a piece. Um, you know that's about as inexpensive you can get, and and um, for a good filtering system, and then of course you still want to you know have a little little chlorine or you know use the bleach the Chlorox thing. Yeah, what is it? Uh, one one drop of regular chlorine, like you use for your uh, washing clothes, in is 
one drop per gallon or two drops per uh, gallon? I don't remember. It's eight drops per gallon. Eight drops per gallon? Okay. Eight drops per gallon. Oh, I know what it is. I've got the damn bleach from work, and it's like ten times stronger. Yeah, yeah. If you get something <laughs> like that, yeah. But your st- your typical uh, Clorox that you buy in the store that's the unscented Clorox is eight drops per gallon. And, um, you know, let, let it sit for a little bit after you do that. And, you know, it's so good. You don't have to worry about getting, you know, catching anything or getting sick from it. You know, Mike, you still there? Did we lose Mike? I'm, I'm sorry, I had you muted. All right. <laughs> that uh, peroxide you were talking about earlier? Yeah. You know, I've mentioned uh, these containers I got for free from work that have uh, that are great for for your emergency water. Mm-hmm. That's what these containers came in, came with. They have a solution of peroxide mm-hmm. and uh, another chemical to, for stabilizing it or something mm. but if you take you know this is you can find containers out there for free if you just pay attention to what's in them so don't get go buy something that you can that doesn't you know no herbicides or pesticide containers mm. but i've got i we go through like two a week and i've given away a bunch of them but i picked up some more but they're really heavy plastic and they've also got in the in the lid you can screw in a, a a valve so you can like lay it down because mm-hmm. they're square. You can lay it down and you just put your cup underneath there and you fill up a, your container with water and go. There's your drink or your cooking water or whatever. But 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 you gotta but you gotta watch and make sure that it's food grade plastic though because otherwise uh, you run the risk of that DP was it BPA yeah. Um, which which is not good. Yeah, and what is it like? If it's got a number two on it, it's food grade, I think. Yeah, number two. And uh, well, anyway, these work great for that. But even at the chlorine level that we have in our tap water, I put an extra drop in there. And so they're two and a half gallons because they're going to be stored for a long time. But you know, even if I put too much in there. I can fix that. You know, doesn't take much. Pour it in your glass and let it air out for a few hours, or put a drop of that other stuff in there, or put it through one of your filters. You know. One of the tricks I saw, you could go to the pool store and get a chlorine testing kit for like ten bucks. That oh yeah, test. You can test and pH and chlorine and it, it, yeah, you can do all that. And uh, yeah, I got one. I got two. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, and you take you know take the city water right out of the tap, and you can check it and add the chlorine to bring it up to uh, to the spec. But I definitely, I mean, I, I'm going to filter the city water. I mean, because of the other stuff that's in it, you know, the fluoride. You want to get rid right. of the fluoride, exactly, and uh, all the other crap that's in it. I saw a video, a YouTube video, where a guy <laughs> showed his filter. Um, he had, a, he had a filtering system on his house. He showed his filter after a year of use, and he it had <laughs> you know where I'm headed. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. It had, had feces in it, even. Uh, I mean, you, I mean, you see the stuff. It looked like the, it looked like you were looking at a sewer pipe. Yeah, uh, it was it was unbelievable. And he said that's in the regular that's in your city tap water, you know, coming in. It's just unbelievable the stuff that's in it. So. Um, well, it's probably not going to hurt you, but just seeing it makes you think twice about it. Well, you're consuming it, you know. Yeah, yeah but, you know. I don't drink tap water, and I haven't drank tap water for years. Yeah. I mean, probably 30 years now. Yeah. Uh, but just for those out there, if it's a survival situation, you drink it. Yeah, you should. Yeah, you should. <laughs> yeah. Don't, I mean, don't even think about it. But, oh, well, it's, you know, this looks ugly. No, drink you, get thirsty, <laughs> you, get, you get thirsty enough, you'll drink your own urine. Yeah, I hope I never have to try that I one. I know, but you will. <laughs> that's, how bad, that's how bad you get. When you get that desperate, uh, you will. You'll drink your own urine. Well, I got a, this water I've got stored. I'm going to run it through a filter anyway when I when we get to that point, if we, if we ever get to that point. Oh, I, uh, yeah. I, see, I'm not... I'm not so concerned. I'm storing, and I store water. The water I'm storing up, I just, you know, right out of the tap because I am going to, before I, if it comes to the point of using it, I will filter that water. Um, 
you know, before we drank it. And uh, and there are tablets out there that you you know if you're on a you have to take off, put some of these uh, uh, tablets for the, you know cleaning the water up that you can get at uh, like Academy or you can get them online. Uh, there's different names for them, but they're tablets. You've probably seen on war movies and stuff. You know, you put it in there, you shake it up, let it sit for a couple minutes, and ready to drink. Yeah. It's not going to help the taste of the water, but it's going to kill the yeah. bacteria and stuff in there. And what happens if you lose your filter, or your filter is faulty, or it breaks? You know, little tube of those. You know, they come in little bottles. You know, get a few just in case. They don't cost much, and you might need them. Yeah, I saw one where a guy was doing it was on YouTube where he had some kind of tablet he put in the water, and it actually chemically affected all of the the uh, solid material together. You know, even the even the tiniest stuff. Yeah, it works with the solids and, and drops them out with the. Uh, and, then, and then what he did was he just poured it through like a T-shirt or or anything, and it you know and then it, it basically strained and kept all the solid out, and. Uh, then he put the chlorine in it, um, but it was all it was all a little kit that he had that you, you know used to do that. It was kind of neat. So he took pretty pretty nasty looking water, and it it was clear when he got through with it because it it collected all the whatever it was that was making the water look nasty. It, you know, with some whatever that material was in it. it, yeah. it, uh, it he was able to separate all that out. Well, and I want to remind people what you know. This just occurred to me, and I'm going to do it again. And I know I've done it before, but there's a lot of stuff you can get. There's a lot of stuff you don't need, but that you can get depending on how far along and being a, being prepared you are, and how far you want to go. But the food and the water are the most important. So, if it seems a bit overwhelming. All the different information you need, uh, all the different information that is out there, just get started. Go for the food and the water. Get started. When you get that done, then you can start worrying about the rest of the stuff, but especially yeah, if you're on a budget. Yeah, and if you're on a budget, you can definitely start off with the water. Um, you know, even if you just get, uh, you know, go to Lowe's and get those, you know, two dollar buckets, the five gallon buckets there. Yeah. yeah. Just start filling, you know, fill up some of those, and you know. And even if you, if it's just getting canned food, right. and getting a little extra every time you go to the grocery store and putting it on the shelf, right? That's at least it's a start. Start yeah. someplace, and maybe the uh, the situation will be over with in a in a few days, and you can get through it depending on the situation. Right. But just get started. Once you get started, you you probably won't stop until you get to a point where you feel comfortable with whatever you think is going to happen. And a lot of people will keep going after that. And uh, I don't, I don't see a problem with keeping going after that. Now I don't, I am personally not going to have 10 years of food sitting around here stocked up for everybody and their brothers. Uh, I'm not going to do that, but some people do. Hey, did you get your dehydrator? Did I what? Did you get your dehydrator? Oh yeah, I got it. Uh, it what was the brand you got? Oh man! Tell me what you got, and in in if that's the one, I'll I ring a bell with me. <laughs> yeah, we're just looking at the other Web, day. Web art? No, wait, wait. Um, no. Well, I got the box for the 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 vacuum pack. Where's my box for? Them? Hang on, just a second. Wearing. He went to get his. Yeah. Wearing Pro, that's the one I got. And so far, I love it. I mean, I don't have any complaints about it. For How long have you been using it? I've had it for about a month now. I hope we didn't have too much dead air there. Wearing. Uh, wearing, wearing. Yes, wearing. The Wearing Pro. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's the same one I got. And, and, and I love it so far. Yeah, I'm dehydrating some uh, stuff tonight. I uh, we fixed up a bunch of fajitas, and we had some leftovers, so I'm put them on there to 
to like make a jerky type thing out of, or just dehydrate them and cut them up and put them in with beans or something or rice or whatever. Yeah, the other, the other thing you'll need, I don't know if you got it so far, you'll need some uh, dehydrator. It's called dehydrator netting, and I got it on Amazon. Yeah, I need to. I need to get some. Yeah, it. it, it it's, I bought that because I mean, you you start trying to put mixed vegetables in there, dehydrate, <laughs> yeah. fall right through. And uh, this thing, I paid like twenty four dollars for. Um, I think it's like a. Uh, what was it? Twelve foot roll. But I mean, you only need it. You just and it kind of. I, I made a template uh, for the tray, and I cut it out to where it fits, and you just use it over and over. I mean, it don't it don't wear out. The one you got is it is it a real flexible stuff or a little? Is it kind of thick and not too flexible? You talking about the netting? Yeah, is it like a netting or is it thicker? It's it kind of reminds me of like a a screen, you know, like on your like on the you know like on the window screen. Okay. Yeah. It, one of the guys had had something else that he was doing. It was a lot thicker. It was more like a, a plastic, uh, uh, expanded metal type thing, thin but not real, not not like a screen, you know. Oh yeah, uh, that's like what they call that plastic um, tarp or something. But it, this stuff here, it's it's rolled. Now what you want to do? What I did is it has a tendency to roll back up on you. So what I did is I cut it out. Um, once I cut it out and got it cut out, I I put it on an ironing board and put a towel over it, and then I mm-hmm. used the iron to heat it up to where um, once I did that, it stayed flat. You know, and oh, uh, that reminds me, I got to go get a, a an iron, a little iron, because my wife told me I can't use hers to do this stuff. To do what? Oh, the mylar. Yeah. I you can for nine bucks you can get you a, a what's called a flat iron. You know what they call a what do they call it? A flat iron. It's a, it's, it's the paddle. It's like a curling iron, but it has flat surface on it. Yeah. And it does both sides at once. And that works real good on those mylar bags. Uh, I got one of those here extra. I think I'll try that. Yeah, it works great. Put it on low. Try it. You'll have to try it. Depends on the temperature, but um, I did it on. I paid nine bucks for one, and it works great for the mylar bags. Perfect. And that's just the normal one like they use on hair, huh? Except not it's curl. Flat. It's flat. It's flat. Yeah. yeah. It's flat. Like somebody wants to straighten their hair out. Yes. Yes. Okay. And the, and the reason, the what makes it so good is you got heat on both sides. Right. Right. You just it seals them up from it both sides. Seals, so. seals it perfectly. Yeah. Works. Yeah. Well, I got my mylar bags, and I've got the 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 bags for the vacuum packing, and I've got the the oxygen absorbers, and I got everything here. And I started dehydrating. Once I get further into it, maybe we'll report on some of the different things that we do on the dehydrating and how that, like I did some uh, citrus the other day, some limes. I didn't like the way they turned out. But then I went, We got I got some from work because we grow them there. And I forgot to taste them before I tried them. So when I took them out and rehydrated, they weren't very good. Well, when I got back to work the next day, I tried them at work, and they weren't very good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, once, like, I'll, I'll go get some that really have a good flavor, and I'll dehydrate them, and then I'll rehydrate them, and then I'll I'll let y'all know what I think. Yeah, and I, you know, and like if you're doing bananas, you got to spray lemon juice on them and stuff. There's there's. Well, I got to go buy some lemon juice, and there's some other products out there you can do the same, and if and I don't remember the name of it, but you can find it on YouTube. Yeah. Uh, and, and and like I, was, I said once before, you know, the advantage of doing like frozen vegetables and stuff, it's already done. You know, I mean, you just throw it. Yeah, you just put it in there, frozen. You just scatter them out, put it in there, and turn it on. And I'm doing, I do about, ten, I'm, I've been doing 10 pounds of mixed vegetables a weekend, and I'm going to start venturing out doing some different kind of vegetables now. That, well, i got to get that netting before I do that, but that's where I'm going here pretty soon, yeah. too. But, you know, even if you don't have. I, I tell you how, I tell you what you right. do in the meantime. Well, I'll, I was going there too, but let's see where you're going. Go first. Uh, just take a paper towel, you know the, you know even the the cheap one ply paper okay. towel, right? And that'll do. That'll work just fine. Just kind of kind of cut the corners off of it where it sits down in there. Yeah, so it sits in there. With, yeah. yeah. And you spread your vegetables on there. That'll, that'll work. That'll work. Well, that'll I'll tell you, what, I, I will try that just so I can report on how well it did, yeah. and then I'll get the other two. And while I'm waiting, I'll do that while I'm waiting for the other. 
that's what I did until I got that net again. Okay. That's that's the way I did it, and it worked fine. Uh, it's a little. I think the netting's a little more efficient because you know it's it's yeah, more, more air going through. Yeah, a little more yeah. airflow, but but the air does flow through that. You know, it works. And what what I did now, I did cut a hole in the center. You know, you notice that if you look at the center of those trays, it's kind of right. built up. Yeah. I, I, I cut. I basically took the paper towel and folded it over. You know, and then cut the corners and then cut a little little nick out of the center where it fit over that, so it allowed the air flow through. Right, and that, and that worked fine. That worked fine. Well, good. That's what I'll do. And I got some bananas to start on here pretty soon. I'm gonna try, I'm gonna get that get that going. Uh, anyway, what I was where I was going, you know, if you don't, if you're on a budget and you can't afford the dehydrator right away, get the like one of the uh, one of the less expensive but not the real cheap ones, the the vacuum packers, and or or mylar bags. All right, by themselves. You can do them by themselves. You don't have to have the vacuum packer. And go buy some dried beans. Go dry, buy some rice. Peas, stuff like that, dried peas. You know, uh, put them in there. Get, that's a place to start, and it doesn't cost much. Yeah, I also, I got... And you can take cans of chili and stuff and add in there. Yeah, I got <laughs> I got uh, my... my um, Jar, um, the food saver that uh, jar, mm-hmm. yes. jar, jar sealer. Yeah, and uh, and I and I have that. Uh, I finally got that in this week, and also I had had already purchased a. Uh, well, that jar food. sealer. Let me know how you like it when you get it. Oh, I love it. Okay. Oh, it's fabulous. Oh, I, oh, you already got it. Oh yeah. Okay. And uh, I got that, and then I bought a. Um, you know, it's a brake seal. I got it at Harbor Tools, Harbor Freight. Uh, it's a you know one of those um, blight. It's got it's a brake bleeder, and it's got a uh, uh, PFI gauge on it. Yeah, and, stuck, and, suck uh, out the vacuum. Huh? To suck out the air. Yeah, vacuum yeah, vacuum. And, it, yeah. And, it, and it works. It works great. It takes about oh man, about maybe fifteen twenty seconds um, to uh, seal that jar, and it works great. And uh, but I went. I bought a case of uh, those, you know, those quart size uh, jars with the lids, right? And uh, just put on a big pot of water, boiling, and and uh, drop the jar, you know, put the jars and and you know in that, and uh, basically, you know, sterilized everything, right? And uh, put the uh, dehydrated uh, mixed vegetables in it and sealed them, and uh, you know, works great. Yeah, and you can, if you don't want to buy the jars, you can put them in the Mylar bag, seal them up, put them in a five-gallon bucket, put them away. Well, I'm doing both. Yeah. I'm doing it both ways. Um, Well, this is more for people that might listen. Yeah. 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 Um, Yeah, also I did a whole bunch of the, uh, um, those Nor um, meal things. um, I paid a buck a piece for them. And I've got them. I've done them different ways. I've um, I've got them where I put six in a gallon mylar bag and uh, punched a little hole in each one of them with an ice pick, and then put a oxygen absorber in the in there and then seal that, and then it sucks all the air out. I've also the other. I've tried the other way where you cut a little slit with a razor, drop a hundred cc oxygen absorber in. The little package, and then took um, uh, gorilla tape strip of that and covered that slit up. Right, and that works. That works as well. I also tried it where I took and cut a slit, put a hundred cc uh, oxygen over in there, and then resealed um, using uh, you know the same method you used to that way it's mylar, and you can seal it just as well the same way you would you know seal the mylar bag. Right. So and that worked too. So you just got to be careful and make sure, you know, you, you'll know if it doesn't seal properly because it doesn't, you know, doesn't prune down. Right. Um, but that stuff will keep, you know, for several years already. Well, it wouldn't hurt uh, if you do all this and you get some bags sealed up or whatever. You, you know, especially at the beginning when you first start, make sure your seals are good. Don't put the stuff up right away. 
leave it out for a day or two. You know, make sure that you're getting it done right. And then when you know it's done right, then you can put it in your in your five gallon bucket or whatever, and and put it away where it's out of the way. Well, it's like you know when you're doing a five gallon bucket, you you want to put the bag in the bucket and then pour all your you know if you're doing like rice or beans or whatever, you pour it in there, and then you you. A lot of people will take a vacuum, you know, like seal 75% of that bag up, mm-hmm. and they'll put their vacuum hose in there, and they'll they'll suck out as much air as possible with, with that 2,000 cc uh, oxygen absorber in there, and they'll kind of suck out as much air as they can and then and then seal it. But, you, but before you put the lid on there, and, you know, especially the ones you're hammering the lid down, you know, with a rubber mallet, you let it sit there for a day and make sure that, you know, that bag crunches down, and it gets hard as rock. And uh, then you can put that lid on it. Yeah. Well, you know, a lot of people are not going to have done this. So when they first start, they need to make sure that they're getting all the steps right, that things are sealing up properly before you just walk away and forget about it. Because then you're going to come back if you need it, and you're not going to have it. Yeah. Now, I will say this about rice and beans. Um you know, I saw there's a YouTube video where some guys um, got, you know, they pulled some they they pulled some uh, stuff they'd stored up ten years ago. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you saw that, but uh, for instance, rice he, they had stored this rice ten years ago in a in a five gallon bucket, but they didn't have oxygen absorbers, they didn't have mylar bags. They basically were just taking the bucket and pouring the rice in it and then tapping down the lid on. Was it. that the ones where they just pulled off the top couple inches and it was all right? Uh, pulled off the top couple. Actually, the, they said that you could actually ate it, but it, it just kind of turned the, the top couple inches kind of yellow looking. Yeah. Uh, from the oxygen, but the, the below that it was fine. And uh, same, you know, so so you know, it's not really a disaster. You know, if you're doing rice and beans and you don't really get a good seal on it, it's not a total disaster. You know, it's, I mean, you're still gonna be able to use it. Right. But um, you know, it's better to have it sealed and. That way, you know, there's nothing, could, there's no bacteria that could be growing in it. You know, like you don't really don't, they don't really know that in those buckets. There could be yeah. some kind of bacteria. Of course, you cook it out, but. Yeah, but you don't want to take any chances. I mean, the less, the, the less things that you have to deal with, the better. Yeah. And if you're sick, when you're in a survival situation, you got a bad situation going on. <laughs> Yeah, and with the Mylar bags, you want to make sure you're getting food grade. Uh, and the food grade ones definitely have the oxygen barrier. And uh, and you want a, at least a four mil. Um, and I've seen people using, I've seen uh, as much as seven mil, which it gets, that gets a little pricey when you get up to seven mil. But, I mean, when you're putting it in a bucket like that, the Four mil is plenty. Well, my stuff is is vacuum sealed in the first place, and then I put it in the mylar bag and seal it up. You know, get the air out and seal it up. Yeah. And then it goes in a five gallon bucket. Yeah. You know, uh, with the oxygen absorbers in in every step. So you you're you know, you're so. triple sealing it in. Yeah. But uh, you know, I'm not on it's such a tight budget. I can't take that extra right. precaution. Uh, and it doesn't cost that much more to do it that way. But, you know, uh, there was a time that I would have been on a, such a tight budget that I probably would have gone the cheapest possible way I could with everything. Right. But luckily I'm not there right now. So we've been on for about an hour. Uh, if Al or Mike, if either one of you have anything you want to get in, Mike, did you have anything you wanted? No, just check out the site, litfreenews.com. All right. I was going to put a link up to the Linden Farms food. It would be at livefreenews.com slash food. If anybody wants to check that out, and if you want to check it out. Do they, they've got a banner you could put up on the side, too, if you want, I believe. Yeah, I was working on that, too. Okay. All right. Yeah, check that out. Uh, I'm probably going to order tomorrow. Al, if you know, don't wait for me because I'm tired of waiting for them to approve my my link, and it's not that important anyway. I'd rather just get it up for people and for us to go ahead and get started on it, and we can at least get a little bit of our money back while we're doing it, and put it over for uh, Mike so he can pay for the the hosting or domain name registration or something because it's not going to be much money anyway, but it'll help with that. Yep. And all right, so. 
unless Al, you got something, I'm gonna say that it's the end of the show. All right. All right. All right, everybody. Uh, that's the end for tonight. Come back uh, next Saturday, ten o'clock Central Time. Politics and Preppers TalkShoe.com. Stop by my website, BestBugOutBagContent.com, and you just heard Mike with the the link to the new site, which is a backup site for this podcast. Uh, I guess that's it. So we'll see you next time.